Well, hey, McFly subscribers. So I'm going to be tying this. It's actually been a while since I've tied this on camera, but I have done it before. Now, this is a different coloration than I've done. Uh, this is like a green shad coloration I'm tying for a customer of mine. Now, I call this the Squishy Hedge Streamer. Now, it is a streamer I came up with. So what it is, is it uses a dry fly dubbing. However, I put a little bit of uh, UV, flexible UV resin, onto the head of it so it kind of keeps its shape but it also allows this to compress so you can see this can compress quite a bit but then it'll return right back to shape now this creates like a cone on the front because of the the resin and so it really traps air right in the front here and holds air in the back and this will actually kind of catch the the water and then it'll make this kind of do a side to side dart action. Now I don't have any footage of it right now, but I will find my old video and put that footage up so you guys can see the, the action. I'm gonna start with the Gamagatsu B10S hook, and this is in size one, I believe. And then I'm gonna use Vivis 140 power thread in the olive color. We're gonna just start the thread doesn't really matter where. I like to leave a little space right by the eye so I'm not bulking up that area. Bring it back to just before the bend of the hook there. And then I'm going to use this pearl web from Fly Tires Dungeon. Basically it's pearl mylar wrapped around some fibers, some thin fibers to give it a real kinky look to it. I like to wet it Kind of keep it together and then you want this one two about two times the hook shank length and now we're going to trim this so it doesn't have to be exact so you tie it in in the center there and then double it up in the back we can cut the extra off wet this to kind of keep it together it wants to go every which way which is kind of what we want it gives a, a nice holographic look to it maybe not holographic that's not the word i'm looking for but you get what I mean. Normally I used to use the bullfrog dubbing, dubbing um, but this is just matte. Uh, there's no flash in it. I liked adding the flash. So now I use the Clyde, BDG Clyde. We're going to start with the hot white. I'm going to grab a piece like this. And then just separate it in your fingers to align the fibers. Now this is really long and we don't need that length. So we are going to cut it right in half, and that will make right about the right length. All right, so after I cut it, I separate the fibers once again to make sure the tips aren't squared off. And then we don't need all this, so we're just going to separate this to about half. Maybe a little less than that. There we go. We're just going to create the tail. We're going to tie this right on top. Now this is the only time that we use the white right on top. Tie it in right in the center. Kind of push it around, wrap it around the hook there, and pull those forward fib uh, facing fibers rearward. Tie those in. Now just get a cheap comb, just something from Walmart is fine. And we're just going to comb that out. To further align those fibers, make them angling straight. Tie that in real tight there. Come up a little. You can wet that just to make sure the tail is connected to it itself, that it's not going every which way. It's perfect. And we're going to take the rest of that white that we used that we took out half of that and we are going to lay it right on the side here make three wraps pull it up under the hook shank separate the back end here okay push it on the other side of the hook and now you've got that evenly even on both uh, both sides of the hook there. 
All right, now we're gonna take some more of this dubbing and pull out a little section here. This is in the pale olive color. We're gonna cut that in half. You can see it squares off. On the top, we want more fiber always than the bottom, and that'll help kind of, since this is dry fly, it'll help keep this position correctly. It won't flip up over on itself. So we are using a little more on the top than we are on the bottom. So we want to come back and see right to where we started with the with the white there. We want to pinch the sides to make sure that's covering. You can see where the thread wraps are a little bit. And we're just going to wind up a short distance here. I don't want to turn the fibers a little bit, so just kind of reposition them, get them angled correctly. And then lay over. Lay over the top. Tie that in with two wraps. Bring this back. A couple wraps there. Come forward. And then you can, you can just pull it back, but I like separating it to make it even on both sides. There we go. Now, again, do a pinch. And then we'll want to comb. So each time you tie in some, just comb it out. It'll really help to keep this fly looking good. Let's go back over this. Just a couple more wraps to really make sure this is locked in tight. It's not going to spin. All right. And bring up your thread just a little ways. We're going to do the same thing. You can grab a little more white because we're going to, you know, keep using that on the bottom, basically. So we're just going to tie it in underneath, make sure it's positioned directly underneath, do the separate thing. We're just going to keep going up doing this. Again, just a little more. Now, when you tie it in, you can see there's a little more coming off this side than there is this side because we are going to wrap up, right? So it's not directly in the center. When we wrap up a little bit on it, now both sides are going to be roughly even, if that makes sense. Pinch both sides. Now we've got Clyde in olive, regular olive, not the pale olive. Now we got quite a bit of this, and I like this to be a little longer. So we're not going to cut this off right directly in half. You can see little longer section. You can see how it creates a nice gradient of darker to lighter. We're going to do one more of the dark olive, but we're going to use quite a bit less um, of both the white and the olive. We're going to actually do this right up against the, 
the last one. We're just going to come up like two wraps. Still want a little space behind the eye because then we're going to do one last color, which is black, just to really darken up that back end there. All right, so just a little more white as you can see, I'm using very little here. We're just gonna do it right behind the eye, and then a little black. Now we don't need a lot of black. Now, I don't know why, but this black package, as you can see, is not as long as some of the other fibers. And so I'm not gonna cut that one in half. It's actually about this, about half the length of the white, so. Bend that back over, go over it two wraps, bring the white up under. Pinch. Not as important, that's all going to be um, covered up with the eye. So now we just whip finish. You don't have to worry about cementing it or doing a really crazy strong whip finish because we are going to put super glue over everything. Just enough to hold it while we kind of prepare all this. One last comb out here. All right, now we need to trim this. So I'm gonna to try to do this in the camera here. It's not a lot of trimming that is needed, but this tail is kind of going every which way. So we're gonna take it and we're just gonna kind of taper that tail a little bit. Draw it back, see where it's at. You can kind of cut back at the back end here too. You really want to kind of have that come down to like a nice teardrop look. And that's what's going to give it the action once you put that resin on there. I'm going to take a, now I've got chart pack markers in black. And these have like a little dot to them, okay, the, the shad do. We're just gonna put, we wanna do this before we add the resin. You can do it after the resin, but it just, it, it'll be a little funky looking. So there we go, so we put a little dot. Um, I've seen some shad with multiple dots, so it depends on what you're tying. Um, I've tied this in bluegill pattern, I've tied it in a bunch of different colors, so you know, Color it how you want, how is best for what you're fishing. I'm going to take some gel super glue here. Ooh. You don't want a lot, okay? Don't overdo it. Just a tiny little dot at the front. Place the eye on. Now you want the eye to be up higher than lower. And then when you put this one on, make sure it's at the same angle and the same height as the other. Now I like putting it right behind the hook eye, so that way I know right where it's at. But you want to look at it at front, and then make sure it's positioned. Squeeze this together, let it hold for a second. Don't super glue your fingers to it. Make sure those are as even as possible because the eyes are gonna help with the action and how it swims. So if it's, if it's off center, it'll kind of really kick to the left or the right, which might be fine, okay? You still fish it if you mess that up. But I find that it makes like a nice kind of even back and forth if you get those positioned as even as possible. So we're going to let that dry for a minute. Okay, now that that dried, 
I like to angle this upward like that. And I've got Solarez Thin Hard. I'm going to put dab in between the eyes up top and then cure that into place. And that's going to ensure that these are basically attached on real tight and they're not going to wiggle. And turn it this way. You want to be careful not to goop up the eye. I'm going to do the same with the bottom. There we go. Now the eyes are attached. There's no way they're coming off. Now you could fish it like that. It'll do some side to side action. We're going to put some of this uh, Solarez Flex formula flexible UV resin. So basically you just want to kind of put it all the way around the head. Like so. And you just take a bodkin and smear it up. into the body. Okay, now you'll want to shape this. Now you could use gloves if you want, if you don't want to get your fingers messy with this stuff. I know some people are weirded out by that. It's probably not the best for your skin, but you just want to shape it. And I like it a little more narrow than tall, or than wide. Narrow than tall, that's correct. All right, make sure it's even on there. When you look at it up front, you don't want more bulge on this side or that side. You want it to be just about even. When you're happy with it, cure it. Now you can see, see that stuff flexes, so it allows it to kind of move, but it still ke keeps that shell on there. All right, and then for the final, it's again, it's fishable like that, but for the final bit, just to kind of give it a nice finished look, I add a little bit of resin right at the head here, over the eyes. You take that bodkin again, make sure it's nice and even, you don't have bulges on one side more than the other. And this also basically puts a protective coat around the eyes as well, so they're really not going to come off at this point. Whenever working with resin, 
keep spinning it. That'll kind of make sure it's evenly coated. Spin it while you cure it. And there we go. Now because you were using a little bit more, you had to cure it a little longer there. But that is the fly. So there is my squishy head streamer. Once you tie a few of these, they're not that difficult to tie. They do take a little bit of time. But once you start doing the resin, the resin seems to be the hardest part. But once you get it down, um, it's really not that difficult. It's pretty easy to do. So this fly, because it is dry fly dubbing, uh, it does trap air in there, so it will float. So I like fishing this on either a sink tip line, or you can put a little lead ahead of it. So up the line a little bit, put some lead. And this will float up while that, that stays below, and it'll kind of help keep this thing moving back and forth when you, when you strip it. And it'll kind of dive down uh, towards the sink tip or the, the lead that you have on there and then it will kind of start to float back up. Um, it looks like a dying bait fish. Uh, it, it, it works really well with the action, uh, but it does need to be, if you, if you fish this on a floating line, it's just gonna sit right on the surface. It's not gonna dive down. So definitely use either a sink tip or um, some lead up front. And there, there we go, guys. So I used a Gamagatsu hook today, the B10S. You could use any kind of stinger hook doesn't even have to be a stinger hook. I do like the shape of these hooks where it kind of comes back up a little bit. You can see it's good for a hook set, but you could use just a regular bend hook. Uh, you could go even a little smaller if you wanted. I would say I, I like this size one. You could go two. Uh, probably is the smallest I would go. Now you want to make sure it's a strong hook because you're going to be fishing bass or whatever, you know, whatever you plan on fishing, most of the fish that are going to hit this are going to be kind of strong, so you don't want it to bend. But you you don't want a really thick hook. So, I again, I like these B10Ss. They're not super heavy, so it does help keep it buoyant. Um, too heavy, it's going to, it's not, it's not going to, you know, do the same action. A lot of people would ask why not put some, some weight on there in the last video. And the reason why is, again, I, I want to keep this buoyant. I want to keep it up because the way I fish it with the sink tip um, kind of keeps it up and then it you know, darts around and does its thing up top um, with the light action. If you put some weight onto it, um, it's, not gonna, it's not gonna be as jerky of a motion. It's gonna, it's gonna kind of glide in a little smoother, which would be fine, but it's not how I intended to fish this, if that makes sense. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. As always, all the materials I used are in the uh, description section of the video. I would uh, really like it if you guys commented. Let me know what you think of this fly. Let me know if you've seen it before on one of my other videos, if you've tied it and how it worked for you. Love to hear from you. Also, I sell flies, so if you guys want to buy some flies, obviously uh, I'm, I'm selling this to someone. I'm going to sell uh, tie five of them. I usually sell five packs, usually is what I sell for flies. So but I can sell individually um, or even more than five or whatever it may be. But generally five, I'll give a discount just because, you know, I can kind of get into a groove with uh, tying and it's just one off. So it takes a while to get the materials out and all that. So I charge a little bit more for the singles. So you can find me on Instagram and just message me there and let me know what you want to buy. And I can send you an invoice and uh, tie them up for you. But if you, uh, if you don't have Instagram, which some people don't, you could find me uh, find my email right on the website here on YouTube. Just go to my homepage on YouTube and then go to the About section. And once you're in the About section, uh, at the bottom, you can see it'll say Contact. And you click that and it'll open up my email. And you can just go ahead and send me an email. Let me know what you want. Well, anyway, guys, if you guys have not already, please subscribe. I've got lots of videos on fly tying and fishing. Also, if you could, hit the like button. That really helps me out. Basically, with the YouTube algorithm, it tells YouTube that you like the video, and therefore, it will uh, recommend it to other people. It helps me out, get some more views, and therefore, uh, the channel does better. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I will see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.